Hello artists and welcome to day 64 of the Epic Journey. I'm Davina Fem and today we're going to carry on talking about the little portrait painting that we started a few days ago. If you've been following this painting, you will know that we're going through the whole glazing process, the old master's technique. And um, we've started with the imprimatura and the brunel layers. We then went on to a lesson that was entirely de devoted to the brunel layer. We're now going to talk about the dead layer. So as you'll remember, this grisel layer was painted with uh, lamp black and zinc white on a umber background or a Van Dyck brown background, either one of the two, it was relatively dark. What you probably won't see in the camera though is the exact color that this is giving us. Because of the combination of the warm underneath and the cool black that's gone on top, we're getting this quite lilac -y finish. One thing that I need to tell you about this, this layer is if we start painting straight onto this we're going to possibly have a little bit of a problem because when you're painting with glazes you've got a lot of oil in your paint and the oil has quite a high surface tension so you might end up with your paint beading on the surface so we need to do something to this to make sure that we have get the adhesion now the reason you're going to get beading here is because if you watch some of my previous videos you'll have seen that I talk about sinking and as the paint dries because it's oxidation the oil gets squeezed to the surface slightly so what will happen on a case, in a case like this is, is your oil gets slightly squeezed to the surface and you get this microscopic little film of oil on the top. And when you put your oil on top of it, even though it's oil, it might bead up because the surface tension needs to be broken. There's a couple of ways that you can deal with that. In the old master's days they would use either a potato cut in half or a piece of garlic cut in half or even an onion cut in half and they'd rub the surface of their, of their painting and that would give the... The oily paint that you're going to put down on it, it would break the surface tension and the paint would then spread evenly. The problem with doing that, however, is that it's not going to help you with adhesion of paints. So in years to come, you might find that your layers of paints are compromised as a result of the lack of ad adhesion because of these uh, vegetables that you've put on your canvas. So a better way to do this is to actually try to remove that film, that waxy, oily film that is on top here. So one of the things artists do is that they take a, a piece of fine uh, sandpaper and they lightly rub the top of their canvas just to break that oil film. Another thing that you can do is to wipe it down with um, surgical spirits or alcohol that also removes that waxy film or you can do it with ammonia. Now I'm not going to do this on camera, in fact I've already done it and I've done it off camera. You might find in subsequent layers because glazing is layer upon layer upon layer and they're all very oily that you might have to do that a couple of times. If you ever find your paint beating up on the surface, just wipe it down with alcohol, um, surgical spirits, or with um, ammonia. I prefer not to rub my surface with sandpaper because it, it just seems a little bit abrasive and damaging to me, but there's a lot of artists that do it that way, so you're welcome to try it out. But yes, you might have to repeat that process a couple of times to make, you know, each time you do an oil layer to make sure that it sticks. So let me put this aside, I'm going to bring across my palette and we're going to mix a flesh colour. Now see how organised I am. I've already written the names of the paints that we've got here. So what I've got here are all the possible colours that I might need to mix a flesh colour. Zinc white, um, like I've said before in a, in a previous video, in these early layers I prefer to use zinc because it's softer. Um, the titanium white is far too heavy and thick and so too full of pigment for some of the earlier layers. We've got uh, Thalo or French Ultramarine. I think I've got Thalo here. Uh, we've got Viridian Green, Alizarin Crimson, Van Dyck Brown. You can also use Burnt or, or Raw Umber in this case as well. I've got Burnt Sienna, which I've just corrected because I had written Umber here and it isn't Umber, it's Sienna. And I've got Naples Yellow. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix a single flesh tone, nothing more. The first I'm going to start off with quite a lot of my Naples Yellow. And I'm going to start matching to my own flesh color. Okay, so there we have a pretty good realistic skin color. Now let's just test it against my hand. Look in the camera. Looks pretty good. Looks almost exactly my skin color. Now it's fine when you've got a skin color that you can use as a palette. 
if not then you probably going to have to match to something else right we've got all our paints ready now let's talk medium now if you remember your fat to lean rule this was 50 50 we now need to increase the amount of oil in our paints as we go along because number one glazing needs a lot of oil and number two we need to stick to our fat over lean rule so what I've got here is a mixture of 25% turps and 75% oil but the oil is a mixture of alkid and safflower oil so effectively I've got 25% turps 25% alkid oil and 50% of safflower oil now why am I not using alkid oil like I usually do well the reason for that is because alkid dries very quickly and I want to slow down the drying process on this because glazing is a slow process and needs a lot of oiliness about it we need to keep it uh, open for longer open meaning that it doesn't dry very quickly before we start glazing however I'm going to coat this canvas very lightly with a light form of oil now because I've got my oil in a, a little pipette bottle I can simply splash it around I'm not using very much at all just simply splash it around and brush it and then after this I'm going to wipe off the excess with a clean cloth please don't overload your surface with oil you don't want a slick slippery surface it must just be oily you want to give your brush something to slide into Now today we're not going to be concentrating on the hair, I don't need to at this point. But I'm going to oil it anyway, just to give it an even coating of oil. And then I'm going to come with a cloth and just wipe off. Okay, so that it's just a little bit oily to the touch. Now let's go back to the palette. If you remember correctly, when we did the um, the little glaze tutorial the other day, we talked about the, the mixture of oil to color. Now we want a very, very oily paint. It must be on the oily side. So I don't know if the camera is going to pick that up. but it's I'm hoping the camera picked it up it's quite oily okay because we're glazing so we want the paint to be thin so we're going to give it quite a lot of oil not so much oil that it becomes slippy and slides all over your painting but enough oil that it's going to be a glaze rather than a scumble and we are simply going to start very gently and very carefully putting thin layer now again these layers are so thin I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up but this this little bit that I'm putting in here is a little bit of the uh, French ultramarine version of the flesh so it's a little bit cooler than this one is I can see it clearly but I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick it up and the reason I'm doing that in the in the uh, shadow areas is because the flesh has, the shadows are cooler, so the flesh has got cool tones in the shadowed areas. But if you notice, we're not covering anything. You can still clearly see the grisaille underneath. Now, I will come along with my brush after this and get out all these brush marks to smooth it out, so don't worry about that. At this stage, I'm just covering. You, know, you don't have to be very careful in this layer because. There's not a lot of precision involved, you're just putting on an overlay of color. I'm also going to avoid the eyes and the very highlighted areas. I'm just going to go and clean up some of the very lightest areas because I don't want to have to go back and put on too much white after it. So I'm going to do a very similar thing to what I did on the first coat. I'm just going to remove some of the strongest highlight areas. 
Now if I was using a pure alkyd, this might be something I might be battling with at this stage. Because it might already be too sticky. Because it's such a thin layer, it might already be too sticky for me to do much wiping out. Some people will call the grisaille layer the dead layer. And some will call this cool opaque layer the dead layer. Um, and that's probably because there was no hard and fast rule of how things were done. Different places, different ages did them differently. This way of putting down the cold colors first speaks of the Italian way of doing it. Uh, but the Italians used to work with a light imprimatura and a brunel. The Flemish people, however, the Flemish artists of old, in the 17th and 18th century, they were put down red, uh, very dark red browns and, and even close to blacks in, in premature layer, which meant that there was no room for a brunel layer. So brunel layers would only have worked in the case of a light imprimatur, but with a dark imprimatur that didn't work. And then of course they would do the grey grisaille. Um, sometimes they would actually leave their grey grisailles, that would be the finished painting, they wouldn't paint any later than that, especially when they were doing their preliminary sketches. Some artists would even, instead of doing a grisaille layer, they would actually do a layer of normal thick flesh colour painting, a bit impesto-ish, like, much like modern day paints, a toothpaste sort of consistency. And they would do a, an almost finished painting in relatively thick paint, and only after that would they glaze just to refine the colours. Some artists would do 20, 30, 40 layers of glazes to get the colour just right. Now what is the difference between glazing and any other uh, paint? Well, if you mix two colors together on this canvas in paint form, you know, mix them as a paint and paint it on, you're going to get a very different effect as what you would by what we're doing here. We're putting down the cool colors and then we're going to glaze colors over that. Because by doing this, we're getting an optical mixing of colors coming through the canvas. The final result of this painting, you're still going to be able to see the grisaille layer underneath it. So you're going to get a lot of optical mixing going on, much like what you can see happening here already, where you've got the optical mixing happening of the, the semi-opaque layer that we've got on now and the uh, grey layer that we had underneath. And you've got a little bit of an optical mix going on pretty much all over the face. And that is going to intensify as we go along. We're going to start uh, doing the warmer colours on the next layers. We might touch up with some of the cooler colors later on uh, but the warm colors the cooler colors go down first and the warm colors go down afterwards now because glazes are transparent we're going to have to paint from our lighter colors up to our darker colors so you'll see in some of these areas they're still very very light we've still got lots of rouging to put on the cheeks etc now what we've done here would be very much considered a glaze layer although we've worked with opaque colors opaque colors when diluted with enough oil become transparent-ish so you'll see they're not completely transparent they still give you a bit of a chalky finish but they are transparent enough for you to be able to see what's underneath it and that would be considered glazing but glazing really really comes into its own when you start working with completely transparent colors and from here going forward all the colors that we will be using will have to be transparent for this to actually work beautifully in, in the way that it's supposed to work now white has never added to glaze layers. You can glaze, you, you can get a transparent glazing white. It's not completely transparent. It's still going to give you a chalky effect. So true glazing does not include white. So in these areas here that are, are really highlighted, we may have to come back afterwards and scumble a little bit of white onto it. We'll see how it goes. It's really difficult to predict the color results that you're going to get and that only comes with experience and experimenting and education. So we'll have a look at this painting and see how it progresses and what colors we end up getting from. You'll notice that the lips are nowhere near the right color. There's, they're quite yellowish at this point. Um, the facial color is was a, a flesh tint that was mixed but has come out quite yellow. It's supposed to be that way. And then all the shadows are quite green at this point. Again, it's supposed to be that way. So with the time that I've spent on glazing before, I kind of have an idea where I'm going with this. But I'm afraid you guys are just going to have to wait and see what happens to it. But in the meantime, we're going to go back to the pencil sketch. And we're going to have a look at phase two of that pencil sketch. So artists, won't you please like and share and help me to get to my 10,000 likes by the end of the epic journey. I'm looking forward to getting to 10,000 people. Thank you very much again for joining me. Please don't forget to like and share. And of course, you can go to the YouTube channel to catch up on any of the videos that you've missed. It'll, it's just much easier than trawling through the timeline here on the Facebook page. 
and I will see you tomorrow. Thanks again. Bye. That's what you want, what you want.